Hey, this is Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com. And in today's video, we wanna talk about best practices for importing data into SmartSuite. Now, for many of you, if you're just getting up and running with SmartSuite, it's really not difficult to be able to do a basic data import, get up and running with your data. Maybe you're using SmartSuite for the first time and haven't used other tools in the past. That's no problem. But when you are a large organization or you have a large amount of data you've been using in another system, Sometimes it can be tricky to get up and running, getting all of the data that you need, getting it functioning properly without having to do a bunch of manual work. So in this video, we're going to talk about 15 tips and tricks to be able to smooth out that process as you're doing data imports. So the first tip is to get familiar with the SmartSuite data import tool. You can do lots of things like automatically map the fields that you want to import. You can pull in values of multi and single select fields. You can even create linked relationships and link to those different records using only the name in the primary field. The next thing you'll wanna do is extract the data you have from the various systems that you're using today. Now, some SaaS systems make this really easy to do. You can just click a button and pull out all of the CSV data that you need, but others make it really tricky because they're trying to lock you into their vendor ecosystem. They don't want to make it easy for you to be able to take your data and walk away with it. In fact, we were working with one client recently who was coming over from HubSpot. HubSpot makes it easy for you to be able to take records like contacts and your companies and be able to pull them outside of the system. But for this individual, it was really important that we got things like all of the email records that were archived, all of the notes that he had. It was central to his business. And that's something that HubSpot keeps pretty locked down. So what we were able to do is create a script in Python that would extract all of this data via the API and we could bundle it together to be able to import it. Now, someone might say, well, can you use make.com or a different tool instead? And you could, but we actually saved hundreds of thousands of operations by writing a Python script because we would have had to do all of this processing inside of make, and that would be really, really cost prohibitive to do for a data migration of thousands and thousands of records. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is to be able to back up those raw import files. Now, of course, we'd all love it if the very first import worked flawlessly and we didn't have to worry about it. But especially if you're dealing with 10, 20, 50 different files to be able to import, as you're making those incremental changes, you don't want to lose that original data. If something happens, it's the worst feeling in the world if you have to revert everything and now you can't even get back to that original source data. So I recommend taking those files, putting them away somewhere on Google Drive or Dropbox where you can access them if something should happen to that data. Next, you're going to want to prepare your data. So when you have those spreadsheets, you're going to want to massage anything. You're going to want to strip out any values that don't make sense. If there are columns that you don't need, get rid of them. We want this boiled down to exactly the data that we want to import inside of the system. The next thing that I do is I create an import grid view inside of SmartSuite, and I make sure that I have every single field, every single field type accounted for. Now, if you're doing a small data import, you can create these fields on the fly as you're doing your data import. I think that works great if you're doing a small import. But again, if we're doing a large import with lots of different kinds of records and lots of data to import, we're gonna wanna make sure that this is set up perfectly before we even begin. I also find this helpful to have that grid view going so that as we're importing the data, I can do a quick spot check to make sure that everything's looking okay. If we don't have that dedicated view, we're not quite sure what's coming in from our imports versus other sources. So I like the ability to check and make sure that everything looks one-to-one -one with what's in our spreadsheets. One quick tip that's gonna save you time is if you label the columns in your spreadsheet the same as the field names that you have inside of SmartSuite, when you go to the map step, it's going to automatically identify those fields so that they're good to go for importing that data. Now, of course, you can manually select the fields that you need to map it, but this just saves you a lot of time rather than doing this each time that you're doing a data import. It's important that you understand the nuances of smart suite fields. And there's some that are a little bit finicky. Phone numbers is one of those where you might think a certain way of formatting a phone number field would be accepted inside a smart suite, but it's currently not. So you can make those changes using that find and replace functionality inside of the import tool. However, I would recommend that you actually make changes to the data in the CSV files themselves. The reason I recommend this is, let's say you were importing data, you made all the changes that you need, and then you found out later on you had to go back and do it again. Well, then you're going to have to go through that process again, make all of the changes again, because it's not storing it during that import process. So I would really recommend if you're doing a large data import, make the changes to the data in the spreadsheet before you actually pull it in rather than using find and replace. 
With this, I think it's really important that you yourself or you're working with someone who has a lot of knowledge around Google Sheets or Excel formulas because they can help you automate this process. Maybe you have a field that needs to be split into two fields. So we had phone numbers with extensions and smart suite phone numbers don't currently store extensions. So we had to store this in two different fields. Well, we could have manually done this and copied and pasted data across into two fields, but we were dealing with thousands and thousands of records. So having knowledge of how we can use formulas inside of Excel or Google Sheets makes that process go a lot smoother. You're going to want to think about the order in which you import the different types of records that you have. So if I had both contacts and companies, which way should I import that first? Well, typically what's going to happen is on the contact record, you're going to say that contact is part of this account. They're a linked record where what account or company are they working at? Now, the thing is, if you import those contacts first, they're not going to know how to reference those companies or accounts if there's no data that exists for those companies or accounts. So I'd recommend that we import the accounts first so that when we import the contacts, we are able to reference those and we don't have to go back and forth and do updates to the imports. So it's really important to have a plan of the order in which you're doing it before you actually start to import the data. Now, speaking of linked relationships, it's really important that whenever we have the opportunity, we're trying to use some kind of unique record identifier. Now, this is usually something that we can export from those other systems. So they have some kind of unique ID. If we're coming from Airtable, it's got a unique Airtable ID. If we're coming from HubSpot, it has a unique HubSpot ID. It's helpful to use those as the actual identifier on which records to link together. Because hear me out, SmartSuite is really useful when we can have a contact. And for our contacts primary field, we can say first name, last name. That's our primary field. That works well, but think about this. If we have 50,000 contact records that we're pulling in, suddenly you have 10 people named John Smith. And now if we're trying to relate other data to John Smith, well, which of these 10 John Smiths are we talking about? So being able to rely on some kind of unique record identifier in the import process is really important. Later on, when all of that data lives inside a smart suite, we can get rid of those old IDs. We don't really care about them anymore, but they can be really important to help us get situated as we're doing that import of linked relationships. I always think it's helpful to import a test record or two for each app that we're importing. We could, of course, go ahead and just bring in all of the data all at once, but rather than have to massage that and to have to delete the data and do it again if something messes up, I like to just take a look at those couple of records to make sure that everything mapped perfectly so that we know we can import the larger data set after that. It's important to be cognizant of the import limits when you're importing data into SmartSuite. That means that there are pretty generous limits with the number of records that can be imported at one time, but I find that the amount of storage size, so five megabytes, can be pretty restricting. I'll give you an example. When we were doing that import of 35,000 email records and pulling it into the system, the number of records no problem. But because these were heavily text-based, rich text kind of fields, think about emails, we might have emojis and other things in there. When we're trying to pull that in, that takes up a large amount of storage. And so in doing so, even though we had one huge import file of all of this with 200 megabytes or so, we had to go ahead and extract that programmatically. We wrote a script to be able to chunk that into bite-sized pieces that then we could do those imports on. If we tried to do one big file, that's going to fail. So make sure as you're planning out your data that you might have to create several different CSV files just to be able to get one type of data pulled into your system. Now, in that exact situation, I find it really helpful to create some kind of identifier for which batch is being imported. Because think about it this way. If you had 25 different files that had to come in and be imported for all of your contacts, and suddenly in that process, two of them failed out, how would you know which ones failed out? You'd see the record numbers at the bottom. You'd see, oh, okay, we're missing something, but you wouldn't know which data failed. So I find it really helpful to have either an integer or a date or something that represents this unique import so that you can find which ones failed out, which ones do I have to redo? Maybe you run a filter and you delete out those records so you can redo one of the batches that you had. But this gives you a lot more flexibility if you need to make changes or rerun some of the imports. I would really recommend that you turn off your integrations and your automations when you're doing the import process. Because imagine if you had an automation that ran on the creation of a contact record, and suddenly you're doing an import of 10,000 contact records, 
Now you're going to be queuing up that automation to run 10,000 times. Well, forget about the limits for a second. Just think about what that means from a performance standpoint. That's absolutely going to slow everything down to a halt. I'd really make sure you shut everything off and come up with a system to be able to run the updates you need to afterwards, or even to build the automation logic into your initially imported values. There's lots of different ways to handle it, but don't set off all those automations at the same time. Make sure you shut that off before you run the imports. So once you've imported all of the data into the system, you're good to go. You're gonna to wanna to do some tests, grab some sample data, see if it mapped over correctly. You wanna check your power search, make sure that everything got indexed properly in the process, make sure that everything's functioning, and then you'll wanna create a cutover plan because presumably you've had users who have been using this other system in the past and they now need to make sure they're using the new system because you're not going to take any of that new data in these few days of data imports and keep moving it over. So coming up with a plan for users of saying, here's when you're gonna cut over, here's when you're going to begin using the new system is really important. Using SmartSuite's data import tool is really easy, especially when you're dealing with a small number of records or you're building the system for the very first time. But if you're an organization that's pulling in data from multiple different data sources, you're probably going to want to work with a partner to help manage that process because there's a lot to think about to make sure that your data is going to function exactly the way you want. If you need any help with your data imports, feel free to reach out to us at automationhelpers.com where we're offering a free 30-minute consultation.